TRW, uh, little round top, Avalon Hill Edition. Uh, just two things by way of introduction. Uh, one, this really is the scale and scope that uh, that I prefer most. Um, yeah, and, and I know that there are other games that are in this general um, scale and scope um, category, and um, I imagine over time I'll acquire many of them and try them. But th this is really the scale and scope that I, I really um, connect with the most. Second, this is uh, my look here at Little Round Top is 100% meant to be an introduction to Devil's Den. Um, yeah. Um, I think I've, I've read before um, that this can serve as an introduction to Devil's Den, and so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and do that. I, I'm going to use this as an introduction to Devil's Den, and I hope that um, and I hope that this does uh, help uh, easing into Devil's Den in the future. Okay. Um, well, let's talk about setting up. Uh, just setting up the game. Um, so you have the Union. Um, so at the start of the game, both players set up their units on the map. Uh, there are designations here for the Union line here. Obviously up here we have the 83rd Pennsylvania, part of the 83rd Pennsylvania. Uh, yeah, and then we have the 20th Maine, and this part of the 20th Maine, the second uh, sharp, sharpshooters. Um, additional units may enter the game as reinforcements. Uh, for example, these two companies here for the Union side on turn four. Uh, before starting, the player should decide which, if, if any, of the optional rules uh, they're going to play with. Obviously, I'll consider each as I go. There are three distinct uh, optional rules. Uh, numbered in the in the rule set, I'll just talk about the first one. 21.4 optional unit. I will go ahead and play with Company A of 15th Alabama. It's right here off off board. Uh, company uh, A of the 15th Alabama normally does not enter the game at all. It remained off map throughout the battle. Um, however, the players have the option. They can allow this company to enter normally with its regiment. I'm going to do that. I'm just going to just going to keep this all self-contained so I also think I think the Confederates in game terms probably need the help uh, so I'll do that um, then there are two other optional rules that I'll look at when they come up after both players have set up the play begins with the Confederate player turn right here Confederate player turn turn one because I mean that is specified because the normal sequence of play has the Union player turn first Okay, um, Union set up again the 20th Maine here. Um, of note we have the flag, of note we have Colonel Chamberlain. Um, oddly enough they're all set, they're all specified to be set up facing south. Okay, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, 20th Maine Detachment, that's uh, Morel, Morel and the Bravo Company, Bravo Company and the second Sharpshooters. They have to set up over here, east of uh, this line here, I think, the 1200 line. Uh, so east, here's the North Seeking Arrow, so that is due north, southwest, east. Um, uh, they, can, they can be set up stacked together. They can be set up stacked together or separately, so I separated the sharpshooters from Bravo Company. Um, these units may be stacked together or in adjacent hexes. These units are not placed on the map. Uh, normally, you would not place them on the map. You would mark their location secretly on a separate scrap paper. Uh, they're not revealed until they come within the line of sight of a Confederate unit or until they leave their deployment hexes. I'm just going to set them up there. 83rd Pennsylvania. Yeah, that's the 83rd Pennsylvania up here. And then we have the two companies that were, arrive um, as, uh, as reinforcements. Um, fourth Al okay, Confederate setup for Fourth Alabama is down here. Wait, where's Fourth Al? Here's Fourth Alabama. Um, they have they have to be set up within a box like this, uh, like that, and like that. So within a box here, um, I just lined them up. I weighted the left side or north side of the line. Um, 
Let's see how they do. <laughs> um, all company and officers of this regiment set up in any hex. Okay, within that box I talked about 47th and 15th Alabama down here off the map. Enter the game as reinforcements. Um, stacking. I don't think I have more. We have two companies stacked there. Um, we have two companies stacked there, so presumably I didn't do anything wrong having two companies stacked in each of these hexes. Um, <clears throat> reinforcements. Um, I need to know how to bring these. Do, does anybody? No. Oh. All right. Um, oh, they're down here. I see. Enter 47th Alabama. Enter 15th Alabama. Okay. Reinforcements are eligible to enter the map during the friendly movement phase of the game turn indicated below, which is what? Huh. Hmm. Oh, there they are. Okay, so um, the 47th Alabama, all units come on on game turn one, entry hex 0416 right here. Um, so I'll put the flag there as a reminder. That's what's going to happen there. Um, and then the units of this regiment may enter in either line or column formation. A little reminder over here. And they probably will enter in column, actually. Um, but we'll see how that works. Um, 15th Alabama. All units except Company A, but actually we're playing with Company A, per the optional rule. Uh, variable game turn, but they do enter 0816 there. So what is the variability? Conditions, okay. At the start of the game, the Confederate player must choose whether this regiment will enter on game turn 3 or 5. This decision will affect regimental fatigue and unit strength. The regiment enters the game in column formation. All right, so we have more columns. More columns. Oops, that's volley fire. Um, let's see, what else? Um, out of ammo, fixing bayonets, um, melee. Think, okay, so. Do, 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 do. All right. All right. Um, so the regiment enters the game in column formation. If entering on turn three, companies B and C are each considered to have already lost one strength point, the missing regimental water par party, and have this fact marked on the regimental status sheet. I'm actually using strength markers. So that's uh, yeah. Um, if entering on turn five, companies B and C are at full strength. Okay, so I will um, I'm gonna have them force march, and uh, they'll come in on turn three. Companies B and C. Here's oh yeah, so B and C. They have a starting strength of five. I am going to mark them with a four. To show the loss of one strength point like that and then set them aside again for turn three um, turn three okay just do that okay I think that's enough for for all setup um, these guys are going to start in line not column um, so obviously the uh, Confederates go first uh, per the setup rules there, um, I don't think I'd worry about command phase, so we're going right to movement. Um, uh, um, let me get right into it, but I guess we have to do... Um, the player turns are, are identical, so 
Um, we're going to start with phase B movement. Uh, I guess we have to do officers in command. So right now we have one one Confederate officer on the board. Obviously, Lieutenant Colonel Scruggs here, Fourth Alabama. Um, they are heading up the. Yeah, they're on level three there, heading up level four through a clearing and then into another wood line. Um, the importance of leadership and battle represented by command points. So pres I'm presuming um, command point total. So Lieutenant Colonel Scruggs has 20 command point uh, total or allowance maybe. Command radius is four. All right, he clearly has his his forces consolidated there. Um, so I guess we're talking 20 points to spend. Um, uh, I think I will in the future make my own separate command post, command point cost chart. It's on the board here, but uh, maybe I will make my own separately in the future, but let's get into it. We know, um, um, okay, so all formation changes, where is it, change formation, Change facing, cross stone wall, movement, uh, volley, fire, initiate melee, uh, remove fixed bayonets, rally. Um, the required expenditure of command points officers may only influence companies of their own regiment. They have absolutely no effect on comp companies of other regiments. Company may only receive command points from a single officer during a game turn. Companies that receive no command points may not perform any of the functions listed on the command point cost chart. They may fire, however. Well, there won't be any firing here, obviously. Um, <clears throat> so the command point total. Scruggs is 20. Each officer may expend command points for any of the functions listed on the command. All right, so they want to move. Move one hex forward, same level. No, they're going up one level. As I just mentioned, they're going up one level. So move one, one hex forward, change level, and infantry in line is four. So... Um, what is the highest? Ooh, Chamberlain has 30. Alright, Chamberlain has 30. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my uh, dice here to, to expend points. I'm going to go up, um, not, not down. Um, so, uh, first of all, just in general, I think that... Uh, Move one hex forward, change level, I guess would be four here. Then it would be plus eight to move these two up here, plus another eight to move these up here, which of course, uh, which of course would, um, uh, is that eight, six, actually that would be everybody. Um, move one hex forward, change level. Um, but I'm wondering if there's any, are, are there any rules for economy, um, of, uh, of effort here? Um, so we, we're going to expend these in both the command and movement phase. Obviously the two phases together, uh, points expended cannot ex uh, exceed the commander's, um, uh, command point, uh, allotment there. Uh, command radius, maximum distance and hexes, and that a company may be from an officer and still receive his orders. Um, obviously we have, uh, so here's the example of Confederate Lieutenant Colonel Scruggs. The command radius of four was in hex 0916, which he is not. 0916 is up here. No. No, it's down here. Um, okay, he could uh, command a company. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, command radii may not be traced through any hex containing enemy zones of control. So there are zones of control in this game, all right. Command bonus and officer's command point total may be increased by six points if the officer is able to give exactly... Here we, here, here's a, an efficiency thing, I guess. Um, an, off, an officer's command point total may be increased by six points if the officer is able to give exactly the same order to four more companies, all of which are currently stacked together or adjacent to one another. The order is simply being passed down the line, saving the officer time and effort. Oh, this is what I was looking for. This bonus may only be given once for each officer during game turn. Orders qualifying for this bonus are as follows. 
Any formation change? Okay. Any movement, including changing facing or the order of stacking in a hex? Where's that? Change change order of stacking. Okay, so you do spend two command points to change order of stacking. So order of stacking matters. Okay. Um, volley fire, initiating melee, fixing or moving bayonets. Okay. So any movement. So okay. So that means if give exactly the same the same order. To four or more companies, he's got uh, one, two, three, four, five companies here. He's going to give the order move uh, one hex forward, change level. So I guess his allotment would change to 26. So yeah, okay. So that's that's exactly what that means. Um, so. So that is 20, but he has six more points. So uh, let's see. So just for example, we could expend two more to change the order of stacking there. For example, for example um, not that that is important at all. Um, 22. 3B, 3B. 3 is the initial strength. B is the morale rating. Morale rating. Um, okay, so that'll be 22, and then, you know, whatever else. Volley fire. Um, we have a wood line in front of us, obviously. Okay, so, so that is that. Um, that is the movement phase. Fire combat phase. De uh, defensive fire first. Um, uh, no volley fire is permitted. Uh, offensive fire. Um, there we go. And then melee phase. So that is it, I think. Let's right, so go to the next turn and... Uh, the Union uh, player turned first.